let's start sharing our real stories regarding reproductive care. I'll go first. Hey beautiful people, how you are doing today? It's your girl Destiny here and welcome to my channel. How you are doing? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. So this video, I find this video so interesting. You guys know I always come with interesting conversation and always, okay? So this video is a video of a woman who came online to share a story about how reproductive care is not being talked about a lot among women and people can really share their story and she went on to talk about how she was being sa and she could not really have the conversation because she didn't know how people were going to accept it and the person that sa did it without protection and she knows that there were risks for her and all that including getting pregnant and all that and then she talked to a friend that took her to a uh, like a family planning care hospital and then she said the way those women received her and talked to her and just made her feel like she was not alone just gave her a really peace of mind and then she really wants to open the window for women to come and share their story especially talking about reproductive health care and reproductive system and how it is i personally i feel like when it comes to generally as women and especially within our body and what we choose to do with our body it's recently now that we're not very, very vocal and bold and comfortable talking about it with each other. Normally, I feel like it's been like a no, no, no talk thing at all. So I really find this conversation very, very interesting. So let's go hear what this uh, woman have to say and then we'll come back and talk more. People who are making decisions about our bodies act as if it's all a hypothetical situation. So let's start sharing our real stories regarding reproductive care. I'll go first. After I was... I was too scared to go to the police. I was too scared to go to my mom. I was too scared to go to my doctor I thought that somebody would say that it was my fault or blame me. I felt so ashamed and disgusted with myself um, but the person who me did not use protection and I knew that There were a lot of risks associated with that and I needed help um, And I had a friend at the time who went to college four hours away from my parents' house and their college campus had a planned parenthood on site. Um, so I, you know, told my mom I wanted to go party with my friend at a college for the weekend and I went four hours just to go to that planned parenthood with her. I will never forget that experience. I will never forget those women at that planned parenthood and how they made me feel so safe and comfortable and taken care of and they reassured me that it wasn't my fault. I genuinely do not know how I would have coped with that situation without that resource available to me and my heart breaks for people in states who do not have organizations like Planned Parenthood available to them. So many people have stories similar to mine and completely unique from mine all regarding reproductive care that are all so necessary and so valid and yet these things are constantly talked about as numbers and statistics and I just think stories are a really powerful tool um, and I would love to hear yours so if you want to stitch this video and share your story hopefully it can help some of us feel less alone and also prove a point about the importance of having access to reproductive care please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts on this and i would love to know your own take on this i feel like it is very vital for every woman every young girl to have access to reproductive care system and that's not the case in my country which i'm going to get to to my own thought but i want to know what you think but another question i want to ask i don't know why i feel this i know yes that's thing, i don't have to make this about a race thing but i feel like the black americans in the house and even the white do you feel like if it were to be the other way if this girl was a black probably those reproductive care clinic would probably act a different way i really want to know genuinely because Yes, everything is not about race, but sometimes I feel like when it comes to the healthcare system and all that, black women are being treated differently that we've established. So I really want to know if it's a thing, if it would have been a different ordeal for a white girl than a black girl. So I really want to really know that. But I feel like reproductive healthcare should be something that women comfortably need to have access to and freedom to do whatever they want to do with their body. They should be able to make that decisions about themselves. So let's go check out people's thoughts and people's story on this conversation. Love to know what they think. So let's go check it out and then we'll go. But before we get into that, if you have not subscribed to the channel, now is the time. Smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Okay? Thank you. 
So now, let's go hear people's thoughts on this and then we'll come back and talk more. But I want to know your own take down in the comment section. So let's start sharing our real stories regarding reproductive care. I'm a medical student and fully trained abortion doula. I have assisted with and supported patients during abortions that happen later in pregnancy. And for our purposes, that is 12 weeks or later. And I can't even begin to describe how sacred this work is to me and how incredibly privileged I feel to be given the trust to support and hold space for people through such a vulnerable time in their lives. And luckily I live in California, but a greater majority of the patients that I see and that I serve are coming from out of state to try and get the care that they weren't allowed to get in their state. These are patients with fatal fetal anomalies, mm. patients in dangerous relationships, and patients who simply do not want to use their body to carry a pregnancy. Mm. All aspects of reproductive health care are important and our stories are important. So if you can share your story, learn about the legislation in your state and talk with people in your community about the importance of reproductive health care. So let's start sharing our real stories regarding reproductive care. My periods are currently coming every nine days and this has been happening for four plus months and this is not normal for me. My hormones are literally all over the place. I'm crying, I'm depressed, I'm angry, I'm hungry. And it's negatively impacting multiple areas of my life, including my marriage, being an employee, being a mom. I feel like I'm on an emotional roller coaster that I cannot get off of. I recently went to the doctor to get an ultrasound done to make sure that there wasn't anything inside that could be causing these irregular periods. And it turns out I'm just having an abnormal hormone fluctuation right now, to which my doctor recommended I get on birth control, not just to regulate my periods, but to also even out my hormones and hopefully get me back to some sort of normal. My husband had a vasectomy, so I don't necessarily need birth control as a method of pregnancy prevention, but for hormone regulation. And access to birth control is so crucial for so many women outside of reproductive health. I know a lot of women rely on it for multiple reasons outside of that. So often people think that birth control is just a means of pregnancy prevention when I know so many women use it like me to regulate hormones, to regulate your periods, to get rid of hormonal acne. And not being able to access it is detrimental not only to your physical health, but your mental health. I would love to hear how access to birth control has helped you outside of just pregnancy prevention. And I know I'm not alone, and I think it's really important that we share this side of the story regarding access to birth control, mm -hmm. especially when people are actively trying to take it away. Let's start sharing our um, real yeah. stories regarding reproductive care. If it hadn't been for access to emergency reproductive care, my mom would have died when I was six years old. I remember my little brother and I um, getting <laughs> herded into a van and dad woke us up in the middle of the night, took us to the emergency room and we spent hours playing with one of those little tables that had the little magnets inside and like a big magnet on the outside you can move it around. <laughs> That's most of what I remember from that night. I didn't find out the magnitude of the situation until much later in life. Uh, my mom had an ectopic pregnancy that ruptured. Oh. If the doctor had taken any time to consider the viability of her pregnancy or the severity of the risk to her life, my mom got out on that table. Oh. If you've ever seen a picture of my mom, you know that we have the same face. She basically said copy paste. <laughs> and I've always really loved that I know exactly what I'm gonna look like 30 years down the road. I cannot imagine a world where I didn't know what I am gonna look like in my 70s. I cannot imagine a world where my dad, who met my mom on a blind date when they were 16, became a single parent at 36. I don't want to think about what would happen if my mom was in that situation today and was taken to a hospital in any of the states where they are systematically dismantling reproductive rights. Hmm. I don't want to think about that, but I do because it is happening and we have to pay attention. So let's start sharing our real stories regarding reproductive care. I'll go first. When I was 17, I was stripped away from my friends, my family, future jobs, the job that I had, almost my college education, my independence and any and all bodily autonomy from a very relationship. 
he would throw away my birth control and refuse to wear any protection because we were going to be together forever anyways. What's the worst that could happen? A baby? That would be a freaking miracle. I was so young and this was my first real and, and serious relationship. So I had no idea that um, him forcing himself on me was considered because we were together. <laughs> I will never, ever forget being a scared and confused teenager walking through the pharmacy aisles looking for plan B, trying to figure out a way to hide it from him. After realizing that I was a baby too, I was literally a child, a kid. After realizing that if I had a baby with him, that would mean subjecting myself, my family, the baby, to physical, emotional, mental for our whole lives. I got plan B and I ended up being able to get on a form of birth control that he couldn't take away from me and that I could hide from him. And now years later, being in a very strong and healthy relationship and having been just diagnosed with endometriosis last year, I have to think about my right to IVF and birth control being taken away. Birth control is a treatment for endo. This is extremely uncomfortable for me to share, um, but I really do believe that sharing stories beneath the statistics matter. Our story matters, and I encourage you to share your stories too. So let's start sharing our real stories regarding reproductive care. Trigger warning, there will be blood. I first got my period when I was 12 years old. And I had been told about what a period was and what to expect, but mine was exceptional and literally got so bad that doctors were concerned that I was going to f*** out. They were extremely painful. I had PMDD symptoms and there was, so I was put on birth control pills right away. And they said, skip that week off that you're supposed to have so that you don't have a period so that we don't have to risk you bleeding out. So I've been on birth control pills for a long time. I'm 33 now. I've had a period for over 21 years. My period could drink at a bar. So between 12 and now, me being 33, I've been diagnosed with multiple conditions, one of them being a genetic condition called hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. With heads, you get a lot of comorbidities. So I have uh, mast cell activation syndrome as well as POTS. And I was happy to keep taking my birth control. I switched between like the patch, uh, the NuvaRing, the shot, all of it, but birth control pills were just the easiest for me until Trump got elected. When Trump was running for president, there was a lot of stuff coming out about him taking away reproductive rights. And so the next day after he was declared president, I called my OB and I was like, hey, I need an IUD. So four days after he was elected president, I went in for my IUD. What I was told by doctors there was that there's gonna be a small pinch. If you've had an IUD inserted, you know it's not a small pinch. I don't know how this myth that women can't feel their cervix came from, but for some reason, doctors seem to think that messing with a cervix does not cause any pain. I had a friend who came with me to hold my hand because I had a feeling it was going to be bad. And I passed out. I was sweating. I was drooling. I came to screaming. It was really, really bad. And the doctor who inserted it afterward was like, oh, I just didn't want to tell you how bad it was because I didn't think you would get it. What? She was like, yeah, I thought you might chicken out. Bruh! Like, what in the absolute f I remember hearing that and just being like, are you psychotic? Like, are you a sociopath? What's wrong with you? So information about pain that was going to be inflicted on me was withheld because my doctor thought I would chicken out. And after that, I mean, it, it was it was awful. The IUD stayed in for five years because I was so scared of getting it taken out and what that pain might feel like. But throughout that five years, it never stopped hurting and I never stopped spotting. So I finally had it taken out. It was not nearly as traumatic as it going in, but it wasn't great. And it wasn't until my next pap smear that I realized that I was getting panic attacks anytime a doctor was going near my head. I mean, like, as soon as I saw the duck bill and I had to, like, lay back and put my knees out, I would start to panic. Mm -hmm. I have a history of, and I didn't have panic attacks over doctors coming near there until after the IUD. It never happened because of the, 
when I tell you that shit was traumatizing, I mean, it was literally traumatizing. Wow. And here's the thing. I had uh, precancerous cells when they did my first uh, pap smear after the IUD was taken out, which meant that I had to have a procedure to remove parts of my cervix to test further for cancer and try to scrape it off, which again, the OB said, you won't feel anything. Right. And this was a different OB. I fired the one who gave me my IUD. Did you know that during a colposcopy, they remove parts of your cervix without any anesthesia? So you have chunks of taken off hmm. without any kind of numbing. And when I was crying, I was told to sit still and be quiet. I don't know why doctors have decided that women don't deserve to be treated kindly when they're in their care. I have struggled to find an OB that I trust. I have other horror stories like being denied birth control by the app uh, that rhymes with Schmerks because I have ehlers stanlow syndrome and they weren't sure how it would impact me, as well as being denied birth control from a hospital chain that rhymes with Schmate Schmincens because they don't believe in birth control and they've been empowered to tell women, no, your body is not your choice. But there is a good ending to the story, which was that uh, due to paging Dr. Fran, she's a doctor on here who helps um, people connect with reproductive care. Uh, through her, I was able to find an OB that performed a sterilization. This unfortunately does not stop your periods. Having your fallopian tubes removed doesn't do anything for your periods. You still get them every month. Okay. But at least I don't have to be scared of passing my genetic condition as well as my many other conditions to a child now. So let's start sharing our real stories regarding reproductive care. I'll go first. I'm going to wash my face and I'm going to tell you guys about the first time that I went to Planned Parenthood. When I was 22, I did not have health insurance and it was so stressful. And at that point, I had been on birth control for a while. And like friendly reminder, people go on birth control for like all sorts of reasons. And it's really between the person who is taking it and their doctor. But lately, it seems like a lot of lawmakers feel like it is their business, which I think is why it's good to tell these stories. Anyway, I'm in my early 20s and I lose my health insurance. Been on birth control forever and I wanna stay on birth control, but like I couldn't go to my primary care doctor anymore. And a lot of people know my story in that my mom, I was in high school, so like there were certain things that like I could have like I could have gone to my mom about something like that, but like I didn't have that anymore. So my friend told me that you could get birth control at Planned Parenthood. Like they would write you a prescription. And I remember I went and it was super easy and it was so affordable. And I honestly really believe we should just be pushing forward with access to things like that, not turning the clock backwards on it, which is what seems to be happening now. And I've always been so grateful because that experience, which was so easy and affordable for me, allowed me to continue to care for my health at a time that was really stressful for me. I remember at the time feeling really ashamed that I like didn't have health insurance and really scared and now that i look back on it i'm really just very grateful but like we need to share these stories we need to tell these stories we need to remind people why access to reproductive health care is so important and the fact that it's on the line is terrifying so if you have a story stitch this and share it Together, we can destigmatize the conversations that are happening around reproductive justice because these should be our choices to make, not choices that are made for us by people in government. Wow. Wow. These are crazy stories. I want to know your own takedown in the comment section. Also, I want to, if you have your story and you feel comfortable and compelled to share, please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts and your stories. But please, as you share your thoughts, please be respectful. As always, you're on this channel. We're allowed to disagree, but do it in a respectful way. So go ahead, feel free, share your opinion and your thoughts. So here's my own... Um, I have so much to say about reproductive health because this is something that... 
I feel like as women, we don't share a lot. We go through it and we go through it alone and silent. Even with our close friends and family, we don't have this conversation when we go through this. And coming from a society and a culture where women are not allowed to have that right to um, terminate a pregnancy, it's really hard. Like growing up as a young girl, having an abortion was something that I saw girls do, girls my age that got pregnant, they just go somewhere, they're like, oh, that get did that get that, that, that. It was something we talked about. So in my own head, and then there was this thing that always comes out that, oh, girls will go get it done and then they are on, on life. They end up on a life and all that. And there was this thought in my head, I was like, so why don't they just go to a proper hospital so they do it properly well and all that. And I did not get that answer until like six years ago. That was when I got the answer. Like in my head, I thought like terminating a pregnancy was something that you can go do it. Like once you don't want a child, you just go to the hospital, talk to the doctor that no, I'm pregnant, I don't want this child to get it. No, in my country, Nigeria, it's a crime for you to do that. So when we talk about reproductive health, I feel like there's a lot of women that don't know a lot of things, including myself, that don't know a lot of things. And because we don't have the conversation, and because we don't have that space for us to talk about it, it just goes under the radar. And a lot of us are walking around with nervous, like a lot of women don't even know what it takes to even bet a child, but they want a child. You get what I'm saying? A lot of women don't know what it takes to carry a pregnancy. Yes, uh, people come online and share their pregnancy journey. I would thank God for the internet. But I feel like even when people come share it online, it's also well edited and it looks good. A lot of people don't talk how bad it looks. It is. Coming for someone that's carried a couple of pregnancies, I know how bad it is. Same thing with um, having miscarriages, having still bed. These are things, even having a bed control, even having, like, these are conversations that when women start talking about it, people give us the side eye, or even other women said give us the side eye, like, why are you having this type of conversation? I remember I was having a reproductive conversation with my niece, you know, and we we're talking, and there was a lot of naive, this, my niece is in her mid 20s, but there was a lot of naive questions she was asking me, and I was like, you really don't know, and that's because society, schools, educational system, even healthcare system don't tell us these things. And a lot of them, women walk into their reproductive care blindly, either by birth control, abortion, childbirth, we walk into it blindly and it's all a shock and all that. And I feel like that really affects our mental health and um, even the way we navigate life. So yeah, I'm really too excited about women coming to share their story. I really want you guys to go down in the comment section and share your story. Yes, I don't know why this video is hitting me off in a race form because I could not find one single black woman talk about this or stitch this video. And for me, I'm like, okay, why? Please, does anybody know why? <laughs> I couldn't find any black woman even stitch this video. Maybe because the original creator is white, maybe. Who knows? But I don't know why this video, I don't know. I'm just like, where are my black sisters? I also want to hear from them, okay? Anyway, guys, please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Love to know what you think about this amazing conversation down in the comment section. But please keep it respectful. As always, you're on this channel. We're allowed to disagree, but we'll do it in a respectful way. So go ahead, feel free, and share your thoughts. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, smash the like button, because this helps YouTube to push out my content for more people to see. And that will be you supporting this channel and this girl here. With that all said, guys, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Goosey.